um, we're going live for our devotional today. It's actually the first time I've gone live, so uh, it'd be great to uh, see some people here. It'd be great to interact with you. It'd be great to see some comments. Um, what I'm really looking forward to is it won't have to just be me who talks about the passage today. You can share your own thoughts, um, your own things that you've learned from uh, what I'm going to read today. So our devotional today is from Luke chapter 8, and I'm reading from verses 40 to 48. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there, who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Um, so it's a passage that we probably know well. Ah, oh, there's people here. Hi, guys. Hi, Elizabeth and Leanne. Ah, oh, that's good, isn't it? Um, so yeah, it's a really well-known passage uh, about this woman who touches Jesus' cloak. It's one that I teach the kids quite a lot in Sunday school. Um, but what does it mean for us? What does it mean for us uh, today, for us in lockdown, um, and for us after lockdown? What does it actually mean for us? Um, and I think it can teach us lots of things. Um, but there's two things I want to pull out for us today. Um, the first one is that this woman, um, she'd been bleeding for 12 years. If you're a woman, you can imagine what that was like. Not great, um, especially not in that time when there wasn't the same kind of uh, products that you can get today. Uh, really not a nice time for her. And in some uh, translations, it says that she would have spent all her money trying to be healed from this. And you can only imagine what those kind of things would have been uh, for her, what they would have been trying to do to help her be healed, it wouldn't have been good for her at all. And because of the kind of disease or illness that it was, she would have been completely ostracized uh, from society. Nobody would want to come near her. She spent all her money trying to be um, healed. She's got nothing. Okay, life has really thrown a whole load of lemons at her. Okay, she's in a really bad situation. But even in that really bad situation, she hasn't lost hope. She knows that Jesus can heal her. She knows that Jesus would want to heal her. And she reaches out through her dark situation, through her loneliness, through her isolation, she reaches out and she touches Jesus because she believes that he can heal her. Um, and I think that's what we really need to hold on to is it doesn't matter how dark your situation is, it doesn't matter how isolated you feel, it doesn't matter what's happened to you, how bad it is, you've got to hold on to hope, you've got to reach out and grab Jesus and grab hold of that hope because he can heal you, he can heal your circumstances. Um, and then that leads on to the second thing I want to uh, pull out of this is that Jesus wants to meet with you. He wants to heal you. He wants to hear your story. Um, he's not in a hurry. He's not rushing off to someone more important, some synagogue leader. He wants to stop and talk to you. Um, and I think often when Jesus heals, he uh, talks to, tells a person, he says to them, um, don't tell other people, keep it to yourself. Um, but with this woman, he almost encouraged her, come out, come out, tell us what's happened. And I think it's because he wanted to heal what society was saying about her as well, because if she'd been healed and nobody knew what had happened, then, you know, would she have been welcomed back in? I don't know. But if Jesus calls her out and he says, look, you've got to tell them what's happened, tell them what I've done so that they know that you are healed from the inside out. They know that you are clean again. He cared about her story. He cared about where she was and he cares about us too. It doesn't matter if you don't think you're very important to him. You are. He says that everyone's important. He's not only interested in the synagogue leaders and their daughters. He's interested in, in that ostracized woman who's been bleeding for 12 years. He's interested in you. He's interested in me. And we've got to hold on to him. Cool. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, we'll see you again live some other time. This will be saved as well.